Chapter 4, Sugar and Spice. And everything nice. Hopefully you're all having a great day. Several days after the relaunch party in New Orleans, you arrive in the beautiful islands of Santorini, Greece. The next stop on the Taste of the World. Before filming starts, you take a stroll with Julia along a fish market in Fira. Oh, Julia. Take a look at these. Sea urchin. What a vibrant color. Looks like a fall. Good find. In Greece, they usually eat a sea urchin raw with a drizzle of lemon. Delicious. I can't wait to dive into everything here. Especially uh, excited to explore with you. Oh yeah, I do like to think I'm good company. Let's just say I'd uh, be happy to get lost with you anytime. The two of you look out over the Aegean Sea, the cruise ships, the catamarans uh, dotting the bay. The somber expression flits across her face. The more mom and pop restaurants we can help, the more dreams we can save. I talked with the execs at Food Flix. They're thrilled with how the first episode is coming together. But... They want us to keep pushing for personal stories in every episode going forward. They said the heart of the restaurant is what's drawing viewers in, not the technicalities of makeovers and the menus. Well, that shouldn't be too hard. We only have to get the restaurant owners talking. Right, we... I'm not sure Everett will want to get vulnerable. He's here for the cuisine and to do what he does best, which honestly isn't flaunting his emotions. Everett and emotions? I think you'd be surprised. Everett was the one who got Carl to come out around in the end. That's true, but is he willing to peel those layers back on demand? He glanced at Julia, noting the worry creasing her brow. She anxiously... Expression reminds you of something else. By the way, I saw on the Anton Duval on TV a few days ago. Apparently he's coming out with some big secret project soon. You're kidding. That'll create the perfect recipe for disaster whenever it finds out. Before you can say anything more, Vivian's voice cuts through the crowded pier. Hey, you two, need anything from the market? You two go on ahead and explore. Zora wants me to scope out the restaurant before filming starts. You wave goodbye, and Vivian loops her arm through yours, leading you to a row of busy shops overlooking the water. Her shopping bags bump against her legs with every step. Looks like you've been busy this morning. I've been thrifting for the most amazing vintage pieces. Hopefully we can use them in the next restaurant. You seem excited, so does that mean you're feeling more comfortable with the show? It'll take a while for me to get there, but... I'm so happy that we ended up with my larger vision back in New Orleans. It makes me think maybe I can really do this. Vivian suddenly clutches your arm, pointing at a floral top and matching chiffon skirt displayed in a shop window. Lucy, look how stunning. It screams Santorini. Beachy, chick, youthful. Oh, if I didn't know better, I'd say you're trying to rope me in for a retail therapy session. Vivian pulls you into a small shop. You reach out, letting your fingers run over the silky smooth fabric of the top. Do you think it'll impress the restaurant owners? Uh, definitely. Because you'd be making an effort to get into the spirit of Santorini. And I have a hunch a certain temperamental chef will be impressed too. You glance over at Vivian, who looks back slyly. Okay, okay, enough of that. Let me try it on. Eh, this pretty much screams the atypical, like, uh, shells and whatnot you get for your bathroom. Like, I'm serious, it's the usual colors. Seems to be a perfect fit. If only all of our locations could be in beach paradises. She inspects you with critical of designer's eye and then nods affirmatively. Who knows, there might be more on the itinerary for with how good you look. Let's head to the restaurant. It's almost call time. You make your way up to the hill, a uh, beautiful neighborhood with whitewashed walls, blue roofs. The restaurant Saffron beckons you inside, where you see a cozy terrace overlooking the sea. Pretty. This view is incredible. It's the main selling point of the restaurant. You turn to see Everett beside you, looking out across the waters. Julia joins, taking in the side of you. It seems like you took advantage of uh, the boutiques, Lucy. You look like you could be vacationing on a yacht somewhere. That's exactly the look I was going for. Everett clears his throat, looking over her shoulder at you. You look presentable. Wow, I'm really feeling the sincerity here. 
across the restaurant, Zara plasters a wide grin on her face and waves two women closer. You look at them curiously, noting the dark circles under their eyes. Everyone we have here, the co-owners of Saffron, Amalia, and Demi. We're glad you could make it, especially you, Mr. Flint. You're going to pull us back from the brink of disaster. Well, at least you're still on the brink. Amalia, please. We can at least try to be positive. We don't have time to beat around the bush, Demi. As Demi and Amalia break off in a whispered bickering, you glance over at Julia and keep your voice down. They seem really irritable. They're seconds away from going a full-blown argument. You can't run a restaurant if you're on the edge like this. I hope we can help. Everyone quiet on set. We're about to start an action. Wow. All of 12 seconds. Julia steps forward, offering handshakes and smiles to cut through the tension. It's a pleasure to meet the co-owners of Saffron. You know Everett, of course, and I'm Julia Navarra, restaurant earn consultant. And I'm Lucy Adams, culinary producer. I'll be helping rework the menu and concept. The pair of them give you a new outfit and appreciative look. It seems you already understand the spirit of what we're doing here. That means she thinks you're fashionable. Thank you. I definitely wanted to be presentable for my first time in Santorini. It can't be easy co-owning a business together. The two of you must be close. Close is uh, one word for it. We're engaged. At this, they exchange a tired but warm look. Congratulations. Soon you'll be owning the hottest restaurant in town as a married couple. Well, we aren't getting married, exactly. Because a government refuses to acknowledge us. But we'll be making our union official with ceremony and reception. In this week, in fact. Wait, you're having the ceremony this week? Yes, I keep telling her we need a break. Just because she's used to chaos. Dear me, we have been over this. If we don't take care of things ourselves, who will? We understand. There's a lot going on. Our job is to make this process as smooth as possible. Why don't we start at the beginning? Tell us more about your love story. What inspired you to open the restaurant? I would assume we want to know about the restaurant. I always thought owning a restaurant would be romantic, you know, helping people create great memories. That's her. Always a good hostess. I came up with the initial menu and design. I wanted to help create that experience too, but with the food and the environment. She knocks her shoulder playfully against Emmy's. She sells herself short. She's an artistic visionary. She used to design the most beautiful flower bouquets. Uh, that's how we met in the flower shop. Since we were dating and wanted to build a life together, we figured that combining our dreams would be a good place to start. And thus Saffron was born. Clearly Saffron is dear to you. It's beautiful and has an unbeatable view. But something made you ask for our help. So my question is why? I guess the shine wore off. We're so busy all the time and now that the work has the spark the way it used to. Demi bites her lip, risking a glance at her. Right. It used to be fun, but nowadays it all just feels like a chore. Like we're going through the motions as robots. You swallow, wondering if it's your place to speak up further, but you see Zara just staring at you for more. It sounds like the main mission or issue is you need to find your passion again. You're trying to do too much. Yeah, you're trying to do too much. Uh, we're not notice. Uh, when we started, we were finishing school, working at the jobs. It's not like we can't handle it. Uh, Julia looks between them thoughtfully. It seems like the issue isn't about doing too much. It's about motivation. You, you need to remind yourselves why you went into business together. There's a reason you started as a team. But you're also trying to do too much. You've got the ceremony going on. You've got your restaurant. You've got all this going on. Yeah, no, they are doing too much. You're saying we need to rediscover our passion again? And to make time for each other. Keyword, see? Too busy. Exactly. Demi swallows thickly and reaches for Amalia's hand. We have what we need for now. We'll put our heads together and come up with a plan. When they head off to talk to the design team, Everett pulls you and Julia out of the view of the cameras. 
they was very focused on their relationship. Did Zara to put you two up to this? Here we go. Zara didn't have to do anything ever. This is where the story is. So we want to exploit their private connection to, for our audience, grab your popcorn, everyone. We can do it in a respectful manner, the way we did with Carl. Right. We just need to help them fill the spark again, for the restaurant and with each other. It's a fine line to walk. We might have good intentions, but the network won't. You know they'll edit this letter with no regard for Amalia and Demi's boundaries. We can handle this. If we don't give them sensationalized footage, they won't have much to work with. You'd be surprised. The restaurant owners seem on board and so does Lucy. And why do you think you need to, s to be speaking with Lucy? Stop it, both of you. <sighs> We're here for the restaurant, and we can't ignore the reality. We need to focus on their relationship because... You can't separate their lives from their work. We can't ignore their relationship even if we tried. It's what makes them tick. Right. We're in a unique position where we're here to help them find an all-around happiness, especially when they're obviously right for each other. So what? We're gonna air their dirty laundry for everyone to see? We'll show the audiences how, and beneath all the stress and conflict, they truly love each other, and that they can get back on their feet. Everett opens his mouth to respond and closes it again. Fine. We'll try it your way. It's like Burger King. Have it your way, but you never get to. Later that evening, you, Everett, and Julie invite some of the owners to join you on the, in a researching the local area. We want to get your perspective on the city the two of you fell in love with. Well, lately, it just feels like we can't go anywhere without being reminded of how strong our competition is. Wait, what? Oh, you mean the competition of the other restaurants? When you come to a swanky-looking building along the waterfront, she stops with a sigh. Take this place, for instance. It opened last year, and there's still all anyone can talk about. It's out of our price range, so we've never gone. And it's still this busy? It must be doing something right. You don't say that! But what is the question? Julia bites her lip as though turning something over in her mind, looking at the entrance of the restaurant. You know, we should be able to set up a special dinner for the two of you here, if you don't mind being filmed. Here, but we can't ask you to. The network will take care of everything. Then we can finally figure out what makes this place so popular. Well, that's a great idea. I think you two have earned a little date night. That, that would be nice. Alright, let's do it. But I'd like it if you could join us too. She's right. You're already doing so much to help. We shouldn't be the only ones getting a nice meal out of it. It could be a double date of sorts. Julia pulls you and Everett to the side and Everett scowls. What are you playing at now, Navarro? Oh, will you stop it, Everett? Matchmaking. I think an impromptu double eight would be either on the right, uh, on the theme for these two. But the only question is which of us should join. Ooh, ooh, I got an idea. How about you and Everett do a double date? And I'm gonna go home and drink some coffee. Deal? Deal. Everett throws up his hands in resignation. Lucy, you've been an advocate for this romantic route. It's up to you. Oh, not a diamond choice. Invite Everett to dinner. Invite Julia to dinner. I'm still trying to figure you out. It should be me and Everett. We can suddenly learn more about their food tastes for the menu while we're out. Great. An hour of smoozing. It'll be fun, I promise. Julia turns back to Amalia and Demi. Ladies, looks like there will be a reservation for four tonight. I can't believe it. We're finally gonna go, Amalia. I hope you and Julia know what you're doing. And that evening, you meet back at the restaurant and are shown to your table overlooking the water. The soft glow of the fairy lights and candles adds to in the ambience. You slip into the seat alongside Everett, noticing just how antsy the couple in front of you looks. Well, we're here. What do you think so far? It's fancier than I expected. 
Did you not see the view that you people had? Oh my god. Alright. Whatever. Don't be nervous. We deserve to be here. They give uh, each other his hands a squeeze as she looks over the menu, shooting glances at the cameras every so often. The owner spared no expense. Everything looks brand new. Once you place your orders, you wonder how long you can get uh, Demi and Amalia to bond without reminding them of anything stressful. So, tell us what you have planned for the wedding. It'll uh, be here before you know it. We've picked out our dresses, finalized the guest list. But we um haven't quite found the perfect venue for the ceremony yet. How hard can that be? You just need some chairs and an officiant, and you... Very romantic, Everett. Well, our first choice fell too, and then we couldn't swing the money for our second choice. Truth is, we've been so stressed about the restaurant that we kind of hoped a solution would just fall into our laps. Ah, yes, the age-old. It'll fall into our laps if we just bide our time. Yes. It's kind of like those that pray for, like, you know, a solution. And then it never comes, and they're like, Why have you forsaken me? And then, yeah. Not realizing they should have been more productive and proactive. Sounds like you're more overwhelmed than I realized. An awkward silence falls on the table as they frown, remembering everything's still on their plate. Everett reluctantly clears his throat. You two should do what feels right. If you make finding a venue sound like a chore, of course it'd be overwhelming. If you make it an adventure, then it'll be one. That's a good point. Maybe I've gotten too many in my to-do lists, and I should put down my phone. Oh, so I was right about you being completely busy. And that's what I've been trying to tell you. You smile, thankfully, at Everett. All the wine arrives and you all clink your glasses. To the dawn of a new era for the restaurant, for Saffron, and for you. I love that. Cheers. Filming finally stops as the meal comes to a close. They get increasingly affectionate and lost in their own world, a new energy flowing between them. I knew this would be a good idea. You turn to Everett, watching as he swirls the wine in his glass, eyeing the beautiful nighttime scenery outside. Maybe now's the time we can get some privacy ourselves. Steal a private moment with Everett in this exclusive scene. Follow me and everything is alright. <laughs> I just had to sneak away with Everett. And we get a gold star, guy. You want a gold star? Come with me to the bar. Don't tell me you think you'll get lost on the way there. I'm getting antsy, plus I think that they'd like to be alone right now. You know, to reconnect. Everett studies you for a moment and then shrugs. Fine, I'd rather not get a front row seat to puppy love. You <laughs> grin and stand leave, waving to an oblivious uh, couple that you'll be slipping out for a bit. Everett leads the way across the restaurant to the bar and calls the bartender over. And just like that, we're fully clocked out. Careful. Our clients are still sitting right over there. Okay, then we can get away from framing this as a research in the local area. Depends on what kind of drink you order. You turn to the bartender. I need something heavy because of this gentleman. Sparkling water with citrus. Uh, Ozo cocktail, I have no clue. And a local wine. Why not? This wine's their pride and joy. Can't leave here without trying it. Good choice. You can't find a wine with uh, Aristico grapes anywhere else. And what are you having? The bartender sets a clear drink, a shot glass in front of Everett. Tisporo is distilled from the grape, must, uh, and pairs well with dried fruit and olives. Looks like a very serious drink. It's strong, which is what matters. The bartender returns with your drink, and you clink your glasses against Everett's and take a sip. Mm, they seem more uh, sure of themselves now, don't you think? We'll see if your scheme sticks. Running a restaurant can be back-breaking work, even if you're passionate about it. You don't think much of the power of love, do you? And you seem to lean on it too much. 
He pushed hard to center this episode around their love story. It was the right call and you know it. But I admit, they're sweet together and you can't help but root for them. So you're a romantic. You glance over at Rabbit, uh, Everett mulling over the stamen. Mm, I'd say... Pragmatic, not romantic. I want to be swept off my feet. I want both. But I'm a guy, right? We're not allowed to be swept off our feet. I'm, I'm just saying. Seriously. Find a guy that feels quote-unquote swept off their feet. Typically, guys have to make that do for the women. Imagine if it was a give and take, you know? Like, you make me feel swept off my feet one day, I sweep you off your feet the next, you know? Imagine if that was a thing. Hmm. I'm focused on my work and figuring myself out. I'm not gonna throw it all out the window for some promise of storybook love. But that doesn't mean I'm not open to something, if it presents itself. Hmm. What about you? Gotta take a leap of faith and guess that you're not a romantic? He gulps down the rest of his shot, a subtle, uh, playful tone in his voice. You're astute for a culinary producer. So, you think I've got uh, more to learn until I'm a big bad chef? People throw everything away for the sake of love, only to regret it. I'd rather keep my senses than be a fool. I see. But part of the adventure is making mistakes. You're full of passion when you're dealing with food. Can't you see how some people are that way in the areas of their life, too? I see it. It doesn't mean I want to do it. Everett puts his down his drink, and you uh, get the sense his mind is suddenly very far away. Let's get out of here. I want to see the beach. Sure, I'm game. You quickly finish your drink and go down the restaurant's few steps to reach the water. You walk along the shore, enjoying the cool night air and feeling the warm white sand underneath your feet. So, I didn't. If I didn't know any better, I'd say I hit a sore spot with all the talk about love. Not that sore. We're on a beach in Greece. Things could be worse. <laughs> he is literally like me at times. Like, just, just. Spit that shit right out. Just, pshht, nope, nope, not letting down the guard. To be honest with you, it's not often a colleague ops to spend time with me outside the kitchen. Probably because you're so warm and welcoming. Not to mention all the imitating at all with your multiple Michelin stars and awards. I'm not imitating. I tell it like it is. If people can't take that, then they've got a lot more to learn. This is, like I said, just spits it out there case in point. He glance over at Everett and find him with a thoughtful expression on his face. I invited you out because I wanted to get to know you better. You know, away from the cameras in the real world. I don't put on a show for the cameras. This is my world. You know what I mean. You barely string sentences together when we're not cooking. He doesn't move his gaze from the water, but you think you see him tense up with a mixture of apprehension and something else. Well, I'm here, so I hope you're happy. Very. You can't help but let a teasing smile form on your face away from Everett's view. You continue strolling along the beach as the water laps beside you. A clock strikes midnight off in the distance. It's your cue to head back to the restaurant with Everett, letting moonlight guide your way. When you return to the restaurant, you see the two of them still peering into each other's eyes adoringly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seems like they really needed this chance to reconnect and get alone time. The next day, as you're working on revamping the menu with Everett, Zara bursts in the kitchen with cameras in tow. New plan! We need to inject some drama into the episode. Oh, for the love of God. I'd rather just keep cooking, thanks. <laughs> Oh, oh man, I'm really bonding with this guy. Oh, you'll keep cooking, all right. Make us a romantic dessert, something you can collaborate on side by side. Uh, what is this for exactly? 
We want you to mirror the story arc of the two of them in their pending union. It'll make the episode feel more cohesive. So add some longing, heavy looks in there. Excuse me. We want it all live in the audience's mind. Subtle hints, playful flirtation will go a long way with our B-roll. Play along. Everett throws his hands up in the air, and with one pointed look from Zara, you find yourself str shrugging. Ready, partner? The cameras start filming. Together, you start working on the modern, deconstructed take on a baklava. You add ingredients in a saucepan to make a vanilla custard. Keep stirring over the heat until it's thickened. Smile indulgently, remembering Zara's orders. Whatever you say, Everett. You hover over the saucepan. Oh, no, no, no. You're supposed to say yes, chef. And try to focus on the next step of cooking. Uh... Spoon. I just, it's sad that you can't select them to see what they say. It's just... Pick knife, spoon, or other thing. Your arm starts to ache, but you keep stirring the mixture quickly. Here, let me help. Everett moves close to you and places a hand on the spoon. You withdraw to give him space as he continues stirring vigorously, but you're still only a few inches away. Finally, after achieving the desired consistency, Everett takes the saucepan, saucepan off the heat to examine the custard. You did a good job baking! You get a good start! Looks great so far. Good. Let's get it in the fridge so it can firm up. Giggity. Together, you p you finish making the butterscotch and pastry base. You start working on a citrus and honey syrup, and then glance at Zara sidelong. Get closer! This could be a chance to give her what she wants. I should... Feed Everett's spoonful. Everett is something missing. Before he can respond, you bring a spoonful of syrup to his lips, prompting him to give a taste. He carefully takes the spoon into his mouth, his eyes not leaving yours the entire time. What do you think? It's good. Doesn't need anything else. Everett pulls away, breaking the moment uh, as quickly as it began. Hey, but you sense a slight reluctance behind the cameras. You see Zara nodding happily. Alright, let's put it all together. You make a spiral pattern on the plate with the finished butterscotch. Everett tops off the pastry with a drizzle of honey syrup and ground pistachios. Let's show it to Demi and Amalia. You emerge outside to where they are signing off on a, their last wedding plan items. What's all this? That looks breathtaking. Can I see it? Oh, God, does that look good. <sighs> Listen, I'm hungry. That makes you actually hungrier, is there? There you have it. A modern take on the beloved baklava. Cut! Good. Took you a while, but we got some good footage to work with here. Your chemistry should keep those eyeballs glued to the screen. You glance over at Everett, who appears to be biting back a retort. Just doing what's best for the show, Zara. Zara turns away, leaning production inside. Everett follows, lingering briefly at the doorway to glance back more or once at you more. Well done on the dessert. He doesn't wait for a response, slinging a dish towel over his shoulder and returning to the kitchen. He turned back to the co-owners. Demi, Amalia, you haven't taken a bite yet. They grab a fork and they take a bite and feeds a piece affectionately to Demi. Their eyes light up with smiles. Let's lock it in the menu. This dish is a winner. Perfect. The ceremony and relaunch are just around the corner. All right, just around the corner. Oh. You look in surprise at Demi, whose eyes have grown wide in trepidation. My love, what's wrong? Excuse me. Before you and Amalia can react, Demi scoots her chair back with a screech and runs off. What just happened? I thought the two of you were reconnecting. We were. Our ceremony is just closer now than it ever was before. I know where she went. Follow me. We went to a flower shop together, and sure enough, you see the top of Demi's head blocked by some bouquets of... Hands, I 
never been good with that word. Well, I hear. Demi and I met and fell in love in this exact flower shop. The two of you hesitantly approach Demi. Demi, is everything alright? Yes, it's just... Everything feels like it's happening all at once. I see. It must feel like so much pressure. You have no idea. Any sane person would separate the two most important days for their personal life and business. But you didn't, because your love story is so intertwined with your saffron. Saffron is your love story. I just wish I still remember it that way. Sometimes I don't even remember what we enjoyed about running a restaurant. My love, remember the early days. We would bake together, coming up with our own concoctions in the kitchen. She wipes a tear from her eye, a smile slowly spreading across her face. We would leave such a mess. Flour would be all over the tables and floors. But it was worth it. Our uh, ekmek katifi is to die for. It was the first dish we ever made together, and still my favorite thing on the menu. Hmm. Maybe if I got them cooking in the kitchen again, it would bring back those happy memories. So, who's been cooking this whole entire time, then? Bake with the two of them! I'd be honored to learn the recipe if you wouldn't mind teaching me. Seems like all of us could benefit from cooking just uh, for the sheer joy of it. Uh, I love that idea, Demi. A classic ekmek katefi in my belly sounds like uh, exactly what I need. Go to the kitchen with the two of them as they both tie aprons around their waists. Love, why don't you direct us? This is your domain after all. Demi nods, a small smile slowly spreading across her face. Okay, we're gonna make the, uh, we get it, the name of the damn pastry. A buttery pastry topped with custard, whipped cream, and syrup. Sounds decadent. Trust us, when you try it, you'll be as obsessed with it as we were. Amalia, can you and Lucy mix the shredded, uh, high low dough and with lots of butter? And then we'll pop it in the oven until it's golden brown. Meanwhile, I'll work on the toppings. As the two of them separate across the kitchen, an idea comes to you. Actually, why don't you and uh, Amalia work together, Demi? After all... I'm all about working on the toppings. Sure, we'll go with that. That sounds way more fun to add different garnishes. You can't steal the task from me. Fair enough. I won't deprive you. You smile mischievously to yourself as Demi returns to Amalia's side and plants a light kiss on her cheek. For the pastry, the trick is to make sure it stays firm enough to withstand all the goodness we're about to pile on top. Once the base cools, Demi and Amalia pour cinnamon, lemon syrup over the base. You top it off with some custard, fluffy whipped cream, and then pistachios. You people are obsessed with pistachios, apparently. This is quite the operation. There are so many layers. Oh, but it'll all be worth it in the end. After storing the finished product in the fridge, you take it out to serve. Echmech Katifi. I believe I'm pronouncing that correct for the final time. Oh, drizzle layers of crispy shredded pastry and lemon scented syrup topped with creamy custard and airy whipped cream, sprinkled with a pinch of cinnamon and chopped pistachios. I mean, I guess I'd have to try it. I don't know if I could make it. I don't know, it just doesn't look like something I could make. Uh, Demi lifts up a forkful for you to try. That's delicious. The pistachios, lemon, cinnamon all go together so well. You scribble down the ingredients in your book, eyeing the finished Ekmechatif. God damn it! Thoughtfully. If I have to say it one more time, I swear I'm gonna lose my shit. Maybe I could remix these flavors into some kind of cake for my cookbook. A little bit of a extra adornment would be perfect for a grand celebration, like a wedding. But we'll keep the theme of pistachios and citrus. Of course you will. Pistachio and olive oil cake. I'll take the name of it. <laughs> olive oil cake with a base of sweet ground pistachio. Interspersed with 
a mastic pine sap pearl adorned with a necklace of orange blossom whipped cream and garnished with sprinkleable, sprinkling edible flowers. Interesting. Thank you so much for showing me how to cook it. How did you decide on making this dish? This is actually what they served us on our very first date. We couldn't stop thinking about how good the dessert was for days after, so we decided to try and recreate it ourselves. Amalia takes a forkful and affectionately feeds it to Demi. Ah, I've missed playing around in the kitchen with you. So have I. I think the two of you will be just fine. Just remember to make time for each other. Uh, even when things are getting busy, you'll need to take the time to slow down and just enjoy the little moments. I hear ya. Then he turns to Amalia, cupping her chin in her hands lovingly. So do I. A few days later, after a beautiful ceremony on the sea, you join them, two of them, for their wedding reception. And Saffron's reopening party in the restaurant's backyard. Everyone, welcome to our new beginning. Demi cheers and pops some champagne as the crowd of friends cheer loudly. The cameras push in on the happy couple. Congratulations. Music pours from the speakers, kicking off the party in earnest. It all came together. If anyone on the island wants a romantic evening out, Saffron is the place to be. The waitstaff comes by, passing out plates of the special baklava you and Everett developed. Mwah. Except that doesn't look like what we serve, but continue on. You taste the dessert, humming happily, letting the rich flavors of honey and cream dissolve on your tongue. It's been a while since I've actually had one of those. Seriously. And not one looking like that, you know, I'm talking like a... I think it was a, like a fast food one. It's been like a decade or more. It's been a while. The sound of a fork hitting a champagne glass draws your attention across the room. Amalia and Demi have climbed onto a table, lifting their joined hands high. Thank you all for coming out tonight, not just to support our union, but the relaunch of our restaurant. The place began as our shared dream. We lost our way for a minute there, but we're so proud we fought to keep alive. Once we took some time for ourselves, all of our stressful plans fell in place. We're so thankful for everyone's support. They turn to each other, face towards hers, gracing her with a loving smile. And with you by my side, I know I can do anything. I love you. I love you too, babe. The crowd cheers loudly and raises their glasses as the couple shares a deep kiss, smiling all the while. That was beautiful. They head off to greet some friends. You take a moment to stand among the crowd, taking in the reactions of the partygoers around you. Ah, oh, so proud of them. This is going to be the hottest destination in town. People will come here from all over the world to eat. Looks like we have another success in the books. This was very lackluster, I'm going to be honest with you. You step out onto the terrace and take a deep breath, and there, underneath the string lights, you see Everett alone looking out over the bay. Evening. Seems like you're always an observer at parties, not a participant. Yep, we have that in Talman too. <laughs> Everett gives you a tight smile and a shrug. <sighs> I like having quiet away from the cameras. You join him in leaning against the balcony railing, looking out across the sea. Imagine seeing this view every day. Does it remind you of your time and our home in St. Lucia? Something like that. Watch the sea with him for a moment, taken by the way the sunlight glitters off the waves like diamonds. So, is life on the road as glamorous as you hoped? Well, hard to complain when the Aegean Sea is my uh, backyard. I'm learning so much about how beautiful this world is. I could have read about all these places all day and still not have known what it's like to be there. These are experiences I could have n never thought I could have. To survive here, you'll have to continue to step out of your comfort zone. I think I'll be able to do that. Behind you, a loud cheer rises from the restaurant, and you hear the smooth bass line of the slow song starting to play. It's their first dance. Watch as the two of them hold each other in their arms, swaying back and forth to the music. Somewhere inside of you, you feel a sense of longing. Seems like you were right. They weren't afraid to celebrate their love, even in front of all of our viewers. 
they seem happy. When you face Everett, you're struck into silence. When you see heated glint in his eyes, his gaze falls from your eyes to your mouth, lingering for just a moment. Everett, I... His voice trails off as he meets your eyes again, and then he's leaning against you, towards you, with a careful deliberation. Meet him halfway. You lean in, helping close the distance between you. When your lips touch, the world around you stops, the music dimming in the background. All you can think about is the feeling of Everett pulling you in deeper into a kiss of his hand twined behind your neck. Lucy. You kiss him again, losing yourself in the feeling before you have to part for air. You chuckle softly, reaching up to twist your hand in Everett's top. Guess all that flirting they wanted us to do for the cameras wasn't so bad, huh? Something shudders in his expression, and he backs away with great effort. You just had to run your goddamn mouth, didn't you? Jesus Christ! Just had to run your mouth! Suddenly you remember where you are and that the cameras and crew aren't far away. Lucy, what are we doing? You stare up into his eyes, realizing things have gotten a lot more complicated. No, they haven't! You created three out of ten, blah 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 blah, save today's recipe by taking a screenshot of the next page. Yeah, listen, good luck fu making this thing. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, I would say the ground pistachio is the bottom layer. Um, the orange blossom whipped cream is the top layer. As for the um, white line in between, that might be... No, because the, the pine sap pearls are on the top. I don't know what the, the middle layer is, I'm going to be honest. Between the orange and the green, I mean, it could be whipped cream. But then they're saying orange blossom whipped cream. That would be the... No, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if you're actually able to make this damn thing. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, clearly you're going to need to go online, right? And and get the recipe um, and find out, you know, how much parts per whatever to do and all that. So, you know, choices, quote unquote, recipe. All they are is basically saying, hey, guys, did you try that teriyaki salmon that Loka makes? Why, yes. Yes, I did. Or no, that sounds interesting. And then you just look at a picture and be like, hmm, I wonder how that's made. And then you go online. So it's not all it is is them going, hey, you should try this. That's all they're doing. Like, they're not actually giving you, like, you need to add uh, one cup of pistachios, grinded, you know, none of that. But anyway, oh, without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. By the way, if you want to support this community, if you want to support this channel, and if you want to support yours truly, it'd be great. Um... It goes a long way. Let me put it that way. Go towards diamonds, towards VIP, um, towards my m medical costs, um, things like that. Um, let alone, you know, just survival. Maybe a cup of coffee. I don't know. There's the thanks button. There's the join button. There's links in the description. It would be great. And if you're not able to, that is fine. Um, you can please make sure to hit the share button. Share with your friends. Share with your family. I'm trying to grow this community. So, be greatly appreciated. It means a lot to me as well as the community that has already been established. Without further ado, love your beautiful faces. Catch you all later. Peace out.